Esoteric Discussions, a show that gives a voice to the hidden and unspoken aspects of our world, tackling topics in the realms of the metaphysical, the esoteric, the political, and social. So now, join me, your host, Valentine St. Aubin, as I take you on a journey of exploration. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing today? How was your day? You're listening to Esoteric Discussions with me, your host, Valentine St. Auburn. And I'm here with you as I am every other Wednesday evening from 9 on Peterborough FM. If you want to learn more about me, you can visit my website by visiting valentinesaintauburn.co.uk. So tonight it is the 22nd of May 2013 and um, my show tonight is going to be with a very special guest, Lauren Delsack, who is an astrologer and she's also the author of several books as well. Um, So she's going to be joining me in a few minutes. Um, But before I bring her on, I just quickly wanted to breeze through some of the headlines um, because we've had quite a few things happening um, in the last couple of weeks. One thing I would like to say is that Malcolm X's grandson um, was found dead a couple of days ago. Well, this is actually last week now, isn't it? Around the 9th of May, he was found dead um, in New Mexico City. from a alleged robbery that went wrong but the um the underlying story is that he um was meeting a labor leader there and he was having discussions and there's a history here as well because his his grandson was also uh he was going to Iran and then that was he was stopped doing that so <laughs> as we know when you have something important to share uh, they be, they'll be watching you, and if they can, if they find that you are a threat, they'll get rid of you. And um, Malcolm X's grandson had a lot of issues uh, as a child growing up, but he was starting to turn his life around. And he, when I've when I saw him in interviews, he did have some interesting things to say, and I think that can be. Um, I think we can say that he was starting to walk into his grandfather's shoes. So very sad to to um, to hear about that. He was only 28, um, and I'm sure if he had have lived longer, he would have started to find him, his true self. So that was sad to hear. And, of course, we've had that horrendous, horrendous tornado in Oklahoma, which is the worst of its, of its kind um, that's ever hit before so you know so much is going on so so many energies revving everything up kicking things up so um if you're suffering if you're struggling know that you're not alone we're all feeling it in our own ways you know some of us maybe don't speak about it as much as others but uh we're all feeling it so you're not alone so i'm going to take a break and when i return i'll be back with lauren delsack you don't need your radio or your PC to listen to Peterborough FM. Use your smartphone instead. Just use your browser and connect to www.peterborough.fm and click Listen Live. Peterborough FM, the station that listens to you. Right, so welcome back to Esoteric Discussions. Right, so my guest tonight is Lauren Delsek. I've just opened up a mic. Lauren, say hello. Hello? Oh, you can hear me now? Sure. Okay. We just check to make sure. Right. So, yes, fiddling with computers, sometimes they aren't always our friends. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> They're their own friends more than human friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a great pleasure to have you with me this evening, Lauren. Likewise. And, yeah. And um, 
I'm looking forward to listening to a master. So I'm I'm going to, for the most part, once we get going, move out of your way <laughs> so that oh you can goodness. share all your great wisdom and knowledge um, because the time will go by so quickly. And uh, I want to make sure that we have time to cover what we're going to, going to talk about tonight, which is draconic astrology. Um, and I will allow you to discuss that further the 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 definition of that and then how we apply that in astrology Mm -hmm. but before we delve into that i want to begin by talking about your work because i came across you quite a few years ago now back in 2008 and you and the thing is there aren't very many astrologers on youtube um there aren't a many there aren't many astrologers that are using that medium there are a few on there but there could be a lot more and mm-hmm. um you were one of the first ones i found because uh, i love youtube yeah. and you were given a, you were giving a lecture on draconic astrology and i just thought it was the most fascinating thing because i'd never heard about that before i'd never come across that aspect of astrology mm-hmm. so that is how i heard about you and um when I invited you onto the show, we had a great conversation um, and caught up with each other very briefly, but uh, got, right. we got a chance to speak and I was like, wow, this is like an old friend, <laughs> you know, well, that's what it felt like to me. And yes, um, I went out and I bought a couple of your books because you, you, you're also an author, you write as well. And I read um, a couple of them. I read the, they were both the study guides that you have out the right. um, predictive astrology one, the when outer planets change signs, and uh-huh. also um, the study guides in astrology, the one, uh, the horoscope horoscope preparation as well, that uh-huh. one as well. Uh-huh. Okay. So yeah, so I've managed to read those in the time that I have, and um, you have another one. You have quite a few, but you have another one that I really would like to read next, which is the um, the emotional triggers uh, with the health. Um, right. I really want to read that one, but I'm waiting because I want to have you back so we can talk about that one. <laughs> yes, okay. So, um, yeah. yeah, so, you know, what I love about you is that you, I, I've said that all in a very long-winded way to say you have a really good way of using the technology out there uh, with your work. And, and I really like that about your approach, you know. Thanks. Yeah. So tell us, you know, what motivated you to go away from the traditional way of putting out books and things and and um, creating a series of e-books uh, in astrology. Okay. Funny, funny. All right. Well, um, thank you for everything you've said. Um, back in around 2005, when I, when I wrote my manuscript on how emotional conflicts trigger disease and astrological view, uh, my manuscript went off to a publishing house uh, with the hopes that it would be published. And to make a long story short, after a year of them having my book and working with an editor, it was it was too controversial. One of the reasons was it was too controversial for them to publish. So I remember when I received that news in 2006, I was devastated for about 30 minutes crying. And then all of a sudden, you know, as the universe does, I got this insight that said, wait a minute, you can self-publish. Um, you know, one thing I'll say, thank you to my father, because when I was 15 years old, my father forced me to learn computers. He bought a, a, a um, one of, remember those chunky workstations yeah. with the big discs, you know? Yeah, I remember and he, those, yep. <laughs> he said, this is the future. You're going to learn this. Just here's a book and just self-teach yourself because you need to know this. So, and also, ironically, my father was the first person that got me uh, we were invited to see an astrologer uh, back at my Saturn return when I was 29. We, you know, my father was invited by a friend to to come to their house to have a reading with an astrologer. So, you know, I basically have been um, very um, uh, very well trained with computers and technology, so it's very comfortable for me. So when this happened, I thought, you know, even prior to that, in 2000, yeah, around that time, 2006, I I wanted to when I when I when I did self publish my book, it got um, a lot of attention from astrologers, and I was invited to speak 
Um, you know, I was invited to go to certain uh, places to speak publicly, but I actually am quite a shy person, and mm. I didn't really want to be in, you know, on stage talking. So I thought, you know, how can I um, put myself out there through the internet um, and 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 still be in my comfort zone, sort of behind the scenes, behind the the, the screen? Okay, um, and so I also noticed uh, at that time that there was very little activity going on uh, on YouTube. Uh, even when I launched my book, astrologers said, what's an e-book? You know, yeah. but I, <laughs> being an Aquarian, I knew that this would be coming. I knew that it was moving into the digital, you know, world. And so, you know, launch it now and, in, and it will eventually take off. So um, when I came upon, and you can interrupt me at any time because I can sort of go off course here, but <clears throat> when I was, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very... Uh, um, deep researcher, and I and I and I really love to go deep into knowledge and truth. And at the time in 2006, when when I had, you know published the book, and I and I had done a lot of research on critical illnesses and worked with a lot of people with serious disease, and discovered a lot of interesting things about disease and how the psyche and the brain work together. Thanks thanks to, for example, Dr. Hammer, H A M E R, his phenomenal work and. Anyway, so um, I, I was dabbling, I was doing research with um, reincarnation cases that were well documented. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through Dr. Ian Stevenson, who's since passed, but he wrote some books and he was affiliated, I think, with the University of Virginia. I hope I'm getting that right. Um, or it's Pennsylvania, but I believe it's Virginia. Anyways. And so I, I, I was dabbling in, in researching that. I was fascinated with that. And there were some very interesting cases that were coming out as well. And so I wanted to look at um, the natal birth chart of that person in this life and um, the birth data of the, the person they had been in a previous life. And so I started to see that the um, natal north node um, was extremely sensitive to times when these memories were emerging, uh, when when you know sort of uh, faded events were going on with connections to this, and that's what eventually sort of led me to discover the draconic chart. I had also never heard of it. Um, well, <laughs> once that <laughs> door opened, I I just I was absolutely blown away uh, by the draconic uh, mm -hmm. chart, and I even contacted a colleague that I that I have a lot of respect for in the in the astrological community and I said look you know, I've been dabbling with this I want, I want to get another person's imp you know impression of this you ever heard of this he as well hadn't heard of it and he started checking it out and then got back in touch to me and said this is this is phenomenal so um, basically you know I I at heart am a I'm a teacher, I would say. I have this innate ability to teach, want to teach. Ever since I was three years old, I was like getting my little friends together to, you know, I would be the teacher, you're the student, you know. And I think that does come through with the, the e-books that you have written. Um, Thank you. That you're, you know, you do have that passion and natural flair to just make things be very simple. Because that's right. where people get it wrong, especially with astrology. You know, they, gotta, yeah, they try to make things far too complicated when you uh, can say it in very easy, down-to-earth well, terms. Can I tell you, my favorite expression is the KISS theory. Keep it simple, stupid. And yeah, that, that's a good one. <laughs> it's, it's a great one. I mean, it's, it's what's kept me on track all the time. When I start overanalyzing or overlooking at things, I, I always go back to that and it just, it sort of just readjusts me completely because life, it, I just think everything is so simple. Another, you know, great influence in my life is Noel Till, who's a just yeah. a phenomenal no, astrologer. I think he's a great astrologer as well. And, you know, when I took his, his master's course about 10 years ago, he used to always give me the feedback on each lesson and he'd always say, cut back, cut back on the measurements because Astrologers, we have this insecurity about needing to prove uh, our analysis, and so we we sort of throw out, you know, we throw in all these measurements that are just so unnecessary. So he really taught me that measurements are just echoing, you know, the same thing over and over and over again. And he always says, "How many measurements do we really need?" So. Thank God to him, it's helped me um, be a better writer, be a better, you know, edit my work, uh, think in simple terms. So, you know, going back to the excitement of the Draconic, so when I, 
when I you know saw how how accurate this was, not only with my life, people I knew, clients, you know, just the bells were just going off everywhere. I said, you know, I've the only book that's written on the subject, and and you know, I just want to put a shout out here to uh, Pamela Crane who wrote the Draconic oh, yeah. Chart, yeah. Uh, because that's really the only written material that I could come across at that time. There was nothing, pretty much nothing on the internet. And so um, because I also was getting into internet marketing and, I, and I'm sort of a one-man show, I, I decided, hey, no one's talking about this stuff. We got to bring this to the attention of other astrologers so that they can work with this phenomenal draconic chart. And um, you know, and and so that's kind of what got me going. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I started dabbling with videos, and it was more to get exposure, um, not only for for my my work, but for myself. And you know, it's a great platform. So I, I learned a great deal about researching and learning internet marketing, and that you know, videos. And again, you know, YouTube gets so much traffic that someone's going to see you. And I remember when I uploaded my first video before I had even sort of like I, I uploaded it, and, and then I looked at it, and it already had like ten views. Yeah, I thought that's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's so fast, you know. Yeah. So. Well, you know, and. I mean, there's so much, so much um, information here. So let's uh, break this down a bit. I mean, yeah. for me, when I came across your video about draconic astrology, I had been going through quite a big change in my life, in my personal life, and it was like, mm -hmm. bam! You know, I was ready for that kind of deep um, information um, because, as you you have very briefly for us defined that draconic astrology can relate oh. to the soul um there is a connection to past lives there um mm -hmm. you know so and there's there's a there's a deepness of trying to understand who we are through that draconic chart so right. it, i i just i find it very fascinating and, and that is what we're here to talk about tonight right. so okay. let's so, let's break this down for people um mm -hmm. okay. how would you if someone comes up to you and says, "Okay, so," um, and they like astrology, do you? How do you define draconic astrology? Do you go from the principle that everybody has a soul, and draconic dr draconic astrology can then therefore um, help someone to understand the soul lessons that people are coming into this lifetime to to overcome? How do you I, approach okay. it? Okay, my approach is this. Uh, one of the first things I noticed when I was looking at my own chart was I could not believe how it was describing the the instinct person that I am. I mean, the 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 raw, real me. Okay, uh, not only physically, but also you know emotionally, psychologically, all that kind of stuff. So when I started to, for example, read uh, Pamela Crane's book, you know, she puts across that it is our higher self or our soul or our spirit or who um you know who our our soul before at the time that it incarnates into this physical body and merges with this physical personality um it is at a state of evolution a, a point of learning and it's coming in here to work more on certain issues or certain themes mm -hmm. so we see that through the draconic chart. Um, you know, again, when I use these words like higher self, uh, soul, spirit, you know, I have no way to prove this. It's, yeah. it's just yeah. that um, what I'm saying is, look, we've got a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere in our brain. We've got an intuitive side and we have a very analytical side. So whether you want to call it the personality versus the higher self, uh, the left brain thinking versus the right. I mean, we, we do work with two different energies. We, we work with a higher mind and a lower mind, you know, the carnal mind. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I guess, I don't know if I'm answering your question correctly, but mm -hmm. yeah, you are. Um, okay. So what it can do is it can show us, Hey, look, yes, you are, uh, you, you know, you were born with the sun in this sign, which is this energy that you, um, are, are channeling in this lifetime and, and your moon shows your basic emotional needs. But when you bring in the draconic sun and moon in their sign, that's also a flavor of who you are an underlying sort of layer of, of, of who you are, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, 
what what to me is much more interesting is when you use it sort of in sinistry. You 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 put the draconic chart on the outer wheel of the natal chart, and you see where the draconic planets are coming in into the natal houses, do you understand, into the different areas of life. Yeah. So it's showing you where there's a lot of emphasis going on there. It's, um, you know, maybe when I use your chart as an example, I can I can get more specific with this. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, but we, we all... Yes, yeah. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we all, for example, getting into, you know, talking a little technical here, you know, in each one of our birth charts, we're going to have two or three dominant aspect configurations, okay, whether it be a stellium conjunction, an opposition, or a square. There's going to be two or three of these. And when you place the draconic on the outer wheel, these uh, aspect configurations are going to line up in certain ways with your natal chart. They're going, they're going to be emphasizing certain things about your personality, certain things about uh, certain um, maybe... Um, uh, challenges that you have in this lifetime or difficulty. So we know that there's yes. focus there. You see what I'm trying to say? Yes, so yes. what it does for me is it doesn't tell you what is your purpose in life? What is your mission in life? I, I really believe, I mean, I've come a long way since I did those videos in mm -hmm. 2008, but sure, I, yeah. you know, I really believe that, you know, we're all here to be who we really are and to, to, to do what naturally turns us on and excites us. So, you know, that that's our each one of our mission in life is to be the real you you know yeah. <laughs> to be able to express that freely without society or other people judging you or telling you what is right or wrong for you you know what is right or wrong for you you know mm -hmm. and that is the challenge of life isn't it is trying to get to that point isn't it and um you get all the obstacles thrown in your on your path to take you well, away or distract yeah. you or even enlighten you as well um but yes that's such a valid point which you've just made yeah. and yeah, i just and also what, sorry uh -huh. Lauren, I, sorry sorry please and i just want to pick up on the other point that you made um about the layers you know and this is where um, astrology can get complicated for people. And that's why I think very good astrologers are very, um, they have a, a, a good knack, as you were talking about, Noel Till, just uh -huh. training your eye to look for things to, um, that speak to you in a simple way. Um, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. And when we talk about the layers, there's many ways for um, astrology to describe the way that we are or, or encounters in our lives or the things that we might be going through there's many different ways for it to express itself and Beautiful. yeah uh -huh. and the draconic chart is yeah it's uh -huh. just another part of that right and what i just wanted to say and sorry i didn't mean to jump on you but um you know what you just said it is a language of symbols and yeah, absolutely what yeah, okay, so how those symbols are going to manifest, I mean, think about each one of us on this planet. No two people are alike. We don't have the same nose, mouth, eyes, brain. Okay, so of course the symbolism is going to manifest uh, particular to you. And and one thing Noel uh, teaches is that um, the horoscope, you're the one who makes your natal horoscope come to life. So all I can do as an astrologer is say, is, is have a good conversation with you with open-ended questions based on how I'm seeing the possibilities of uh, these symbols manifesting. But you're the one who's gonna, who's gonna tell me, yes, that it's like that. You know, yeah, you give the color, they give the color to it, yeah. Yeah, sometimes um, it's frustrating because, because there are so many possible manifestations for those symbols you know i don't want to be an astrologer who says well it could be this it could be that it could be this it could be that it could be this which one you know mm -hmm. it gets tiring you know yeah. what i'm trying to say yeah um trying to pinpoint that so you have to have the open discussion the other thing i just want to bring up before i forget about it about life is you know i i, I use this analogy for myself a lot it really is very similar to a video game because in a video game you've got things coming at you, right? You've got yeah. these hurdles to get over, these obstructions yeah. mm -hmm. to get over, and you're like battling through it, trying to like make your way, you know? And well, isn't that really what higher wisdom and knowledge is all about? And, and you know, I mean, I, I study a lot of um, astro theology and I'm very much into that kind of knowledge and it, it always comes back to look the kingdom of, of god is within you you are the master of yourself and you know you're the one who's going to determine your path you know and you're the one who's 
you know, and, and that it is a mental universe. I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of this comes over, over recent years with everything that's been happening in terms of opening up so much, you know, wisdom and, and knowledge for people. And, and you mm. know, I think, mm -hmm. anyways, I didn't mean to go off there, but I just no, wanted to bring it's up. No, it's great. No, feel free. You express yourself. I do not like to censor my guests, but I think they're all good no, no, points no, no. that you're I, making. Um, no. And I, I like that analogy of life as a video game. I love that. That's very yeah. Aquarian, I think. <laughs> but well, it's, maybe it is, yeah. But it's, it's, it's so true. Um, yeah, you know, you have to shoot your way through or jump and and then you earn points or you can lose points if you do something the wrong way. Um, and that's a nice way to put it. And, and it helps us to contextualize how we can view the life through astrology because, you know, I don't know about you, but I just, I mean, I was out the other day uh, last week and, you know, the issue of astrology came up. And, you know, you get the blank look on the face because they don't believe it. And I just get so tired of even going there in conversation now because mm -hmm. it's either you get these things or you don't. <laughs> and it's, well, it's not up to me to, to force feed it to you or, or try to prove it to you because this is a whole, as we were talking about before, this is a whole language. It's, yeah. it's a language of symbology. And either you see through that veil or you don't. You know, I mean, right. that's the bottom line of it, I think. But you see, you know, we've been so, uh, I hate using that word brainwashed, but we've, you know, we've just been so gullible, all of us in, you know, we come to this planet, we're born, we're, we're you know, um, spoon fed information, you're supposed to listen to your authorities, you're supposed to believe whatever you're told. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we're not taught um, that, you know, how powerful we really are. We're not taught to trust in your gut, you know, trust yeah, in your intuition. Absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. And when you said about, you know, making points here and making points there, I mean, the only people, the only person that's really judging us is ourselves, yeah, you know? True. Yeah. So, you know, if, if, you know, we beat ourselves up. We're our own worst enemies, you know, in, in that, in that respect. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And in terms of, um, your research Lauren why uh -huh. do you because that's this is following on with what you just said which I think is excellent why do you think draconic astrology has been so hidden in the western world at least anyway well even astrology I mean look yeah if you really, well, that too <laughs> if you really want to go down the path of studying um um let's say sacred texts and astro theology and things like that you're going to see that the, the whole bible is relates to astrology i don't really go, want to go down that road but the, the the point is is that it's whatever i always look at like this if something's been covered up or not been um put out there that makes me more interested to go down that path yeah you know me I mean? too yeah <laughs> so, you know i don't want to like yeah i guess maybe being an aquarian i'm a little out of the box whatever you also you know just so that you know you know i don't know if you've studied your draconic i've uh, seen horse. it yeah i've seen it yeah you you are a double aquarian also you yeah. know you come this lifetime with a strong Aquarian energy. So. Well, I have an Aquarius mother, so <laughs> you know okay. it, he makes was, total sense. Yeah, so you know, that's yeah, it does make makes, a lot of sense. Yeah, that's another thing that we see through the Draconic too is is um, these associations that we have with other people. Um, you know, where we're meant to, it's almost like soul clans or groups of people that you're supposed to be with and you're supposed to hook up in this lifetime for, you know, whatever it's going to bring to you. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I love stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, so um, I think that it's like a spider's web, you know, everything is so integrated and intertwined and linked up and and and, and nothing it, nothing happens out of the blue nothing happens for no reason it's mm -hmm. it's all you know it, meant to be that way you, uh, going back to why do you th why i think draconic astrology has not been out of the box mm -hmm. well that's, good, that's a good question um again i think it's because oh gosh what if that would open up your right brain hemisphere and you'd start to use your creativity and imagination and you wouldn't look at cookbook astrology you know uh, that's one of the reasons why I went to go study with a master because I had self-studied for a long time but you read one book and then you read another author and they're contradicting each other and you're like well what is it so absolutely I, yeah that's a very I good point 
Yes, and so I think everybody gets to a point, you know, basically, people who study astrology, they start out on their own, and they start, you know, reading from sources and books. That's normal, because you can't go to university and get a degree in astrology at a public university. So, you know, it's self-taught. Now, you get to a point where you say, wait a minute, you know, now what's right, what's not right, what applies, what doesn't? And so I think that it is important, if you want to go down that path of, of becoming a professional astrologer, meaning, like, making it a, prof- a career, then you do need to study with somebody who can, uh, who has a lot of experience in the field and knows what they've applied, what they've what they've tested, what they've learned, you know. And um, and so, thank God for Noel Till because mm. he really helped me completely streamline and get rid of what was un- insignificant and just was another gobbledygook of measurements and and get down to the big bells. That's what he calls them, mm-hmm. big measurements, the ones that are you know really speaking uh, the truth. So again, you know, for me, it's just suppression of um, suppression of. Um, Anything that's going to lead to you, you know, awakening in your mind, and well, there you go, you know. And um, you know what's happened to me recently, and I don't want to just get off subject, but I've noticed over the past, let's say, three or four years, that because of things that have happened to me um, in in personal experiences, and 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 with my right, my pineal gland opening, my third eye, Mm -hmm. whatever, Mm -hmm. brain, all that, that. The way I used to be able to think analytically and detailed, it's like that's becoming like like a sea in an ocean. It's just it's it's murky. It's not as defined as it used to be because now I'm much more into um, images and and seeing symbols and and nature reflecting back to me things I need to see. So all of a sudden, like this whole right hemisphere that was sort of like not functioning at the level it was before has kind of taken over my brain, you know? Yeah, yeah. I I like that. I I like that um, analogy. And, um, you know, I also like the, the idea that, you know, we can um, approach these things, you know, if we, if we need to use other aspects of our world around us, we can um, we can describe, you know, the symbology that we see through astrology. We can liken that to a mathematics. We can have a mathematical approach because, you know, mathematics again, that's a language as well, you know. Mm-hmm. And and of course, of course, you know, in the old days when you studied astrology, you had to have. A mathematical brain to do that, you know, to do this. You know, there were no computers to do the calculations for us. You had to be in tune, as you were saying, with nature, with the science around you, with the numbers, um, and so all of that is is important. They're all linked. So um, definitely, yeah. So I think yeah. that's uh, that's an excellent point. And also, um, you know, you were, you started off by also saying that um, you were studying a lot of astrotheology and of course Jordan Maxwell has brought a lot of that to our attention um, mm-hmm. about how the Bible is basically a, a reproduction of um, the movements of the sun you know and, and that kind of language and how it's been um, hijacked and and turned into something completely different and of course uh, you know we can go back to the ancient Egyptians as well using Osiris and Horus and Isis and all of those types of symbols um, which have found themselves in our Bible as well so there's yeah there's many ways there's many many directions that we can go when we even just start to open up our mind with draconic astrology isn't it it's it's uh, it does get your brain thinking even with astrology, you know, I'll make a point here that's interesting, and um, um, a couple points I want to make. But one is that when you, when you, uh, what, what is the most noticeable thing in the sky in the day or the night? The sun and the moon. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, when it's like right there under your nose that you don't see it. Well, what I'm trying to say is that when you start. Um, with your study of astrology and you start looking at the movement of the sun and um, the seasons and the phases of the moon. I mean, this is, this is what we're really talking about, you know, Uh, when you, when you, because what I was going to get back to is, you know, with the moon, there are eight phases and there's a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those set up the structure of the harmonic aspects of astrology, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, have, so, so I guess uh, I wanted to make that point that that, that it, it's it, it's you know I want I, I many times try to put myself in 
um, living, let's say, thousands of years ago, okay, mm -hmm. and thinking to myself, well, if I was studying astrology then, what would I be noticing? I would have to observe nature, and I would ha have to observe what's going on with the sun and the moon. Because thousands of years ago, there were stars. Yeah. But who defined the constella constellations? Who put the boundaries up? This yeah. was man, okay? Yeah, this yeah, was yeah. later. So, you know, if you're looking out at the sky, it's sky full of stars, of course you're going to notice the bright ones, and you're going to notice where their placement is at the different times of year and all that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you bring it back to observation uh, and nature and what you can physically see – that's to me what's telling me is important yeah well whew, i'm loving no. this <laughs> yeah. and I, I just wanted to say one other thing um you know jordan uh maxwell right yeah yeah he was the first person i him and uh michael cesarian huh? cesarian yeah. yes yes yeah that's mm -hmm. one of the first ones i came across actually you know michael cesarian's work who was influenced by jordan maxwell he he really blew my mind this was back in 2006 also yeah, when he's, i was he's very very yeah. um but i i i just want to give a, a shout out to um a, a, a phenomenal teacher uh who's he's probably now in his 70s or 80s but his name is Bill Donahue and his he has uh, thousands of we of e of YouTube videos that are so instructional and uh, his website is called hidden hiddenmeanings.com and he's just uh, taught me so much as well I'm talking about if you want to go down the road of astrotheology as a matter of fact he was he had a um, cable television station back in the 80s and the 90s and he and so he he eventually just recently released all of these teaching uh, videos you know, through YouTube, I, I suppose over the past year or two, and so I have to um, check him out. I have come across yeah, him um, briefly. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal teacher. Well, so if, yeah, people are interested in that. But anyways, no, mm -hmm. that's 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 excellent stuff. And we're going to take just a very quick break, Lauren, about a minute or so, just yep. to give us a little breath and do a little station identify identification, um, and then we're going to. Uh, pick up um, this conversation we've got about 20 minutes left so um, maybe we can do a bit of chart analysis as well and give people yeah, maybe some um, some tips on how to actually read a draconic chart um, compared to a natal chart and things like that okay yep all right so we will be back after this it's your home it's your community it's your radio station peterborough fm on 87.7 Welcome back to Esoteric Discussions with me, your host. I am Valentine St. Aubin, and I'm here every other Wednesday evening from 9 o'clock p.m. And my guest tonight um, online is Lauren Delsack, who has been with me, and she is still with us. Let's just double check. Are you there, Lauren? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so we've tried to introduce people to the very basic essence of what, astro what draconic astrology is all about. Um, so maybe we can mm. talk about, you've got my chart, haven't you, I think? I've uh, got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So let's have uh, a tinker mm -hmm. around to see <laughs> what you think about uh, my draconic chart compared to my natal chart. Okay. Well, the first thing I'll just say for people to understand how the draconic the, tra the, the draconic chart is calculated from the natal chart. So, <clears throat> it, you know, in today's world, you can uh, computer software will calculate this for you. But basically, what we're doing is, you know, we're looking at your natal chart, and so you we want to look at where the North Node was at birth, which in your case, for example, twenty eight Capricorn, and um, to to. Uh, create the draconic chart, we're going to bring um, the north node to zero degrees of Aries. I don't want to confuse anybody, but basically every draconic chart has the north node at zero degrees of Aries. So <clears throat> in your case, we look at the difference between where the north node was at birth at 28 uh, Capricorn and how many degrees it would take to get to zero Aries. And it would take basically 32 degrees, two more degrees, in. Oh, sorry, more than that, 62, right? It would be two degrees to uh, Aquarius and then mm -hmm. 30 degrees in Aquarius, yep. 30 degrees in Pisces. So that's 62 degrees. So we're basically, what happens is that now the draconic, all of the um, natal planets and points will now move 62 degrees 
to a new um, zodiac degree and sign. Okay, I know that can sound a little confusing. What I just tell people is, you know, imagine your chart or the, the, on, on the outer rim of your chart that has the degrees and the signs, just imagine that turning counterclockwise um, to bring the north node to zero degrees of Aries. But your computer will do that for you. <laughs> yeah, luckily that, yeah. <laughs> it can be confusing. And there's a video I did on that, on how to calculate it. Anyways, um, in your particular case, for example, uh, by that shift, in degrees, we, you know, you then come into this lifetime, for example, with your sun in Leo and uh, your draconic moon and ascendant in the sign of Aquarius. So we're going to get this energy to be recognized, this uh, draconic sun in Leo and that moon in Aquarius and the ascendant, <clears throat> excuse me, it needs to be uh, socially significant. It needs to be helpful to other people, to be unique and, and unusual, um, and you know, to to basically work toward humanitarian social service. It's always Aquarius is very much when it was somebody with a moon in Aquarius. You know, how do you help other people? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can we can look at that now. When I when I bring when you uh, bring the draconic chart on the outer wheel with the natal in the inner wheel, one of the first things I always look for, uh, just as you would in a natal chart, is you, you look to see if any of the draconic planets are coming in on the natal angles of the horoscope, okay? On yeah. the ascend descendant, on the horizontal axis or the vertical axis. Because any planet on the angle of a horoscope is always going to be uh, more emphasized. It's always going to project itself more strongly, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so in your particular case, you don't have angular plan planet, draconic planets coming in on the angles. So that's okay. But what I originally was talking about is I look at the major aspect structures in your natal horoscope. So for example, you have, and sorry, I'm kind of flipping papers around here, but uh, let's see, you know, you're born with um, Neptune opposed uh, natal Mercury and the sun mm -hmm. yep. and Saturn. Okay. So I would want to see hmm, where does that opposition come in uh, when I put the draconic on the outer wheel and the natal on the inner wheel. And I can see that that opposition falls, uh, let's say, right around the cusp of the second and the eighth house, okay? Yeah. And it squares into the natal midheaven, okay? It's forming a, a T-square to your natal midheaven at one degree of Scorpio. Am, am I following? Yeah, I'm following you. Okay. So I know not only does the draconic sun, Mercury, Saturn, even... Venus and Mars, they're all coming into that natal eighth house. They're all hovered around that eighth house. Do you mm, understand? Yeah. <laughs> so immediately I know that there's a strong eighth house emphasis in this lifetime, even though in your natal, you don't have yeah, natal. Because I was about to say, eight. yeah, I don't have that, anything in there. Yeah. But your sun rule, your natal sun rules, rules the eighth. Yeah, it does. Exactly. So yeah. See, what the draconic just showed me right there is if I was calculating, you know, if I was analyzing your birth chart, like preparing it for a consultation with you, I might wonder, is 8th house all that important to her? Well, as soon as I pull the draconic in, I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five planets sitting there. I have, I know it's important, mm. you see? That's, that's now, amazing, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, is that the Neptune opposition uh, to Mercury in your natal, you know, because draconically it's coming in and it's emphasizing the midheaven, the profession, the social standing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that it could be, for example, communication about spiritual subject, you know, Neptune, mm -hmm. the spiritual, okay, with Mercury could be saying, hey, there's something going on here with the way that she communicates uh, that, that comes through the profession in this lifetime. Now, the reason I said that is because if we look at one other natal aspect you have, you have, um, you were born with Pluto square to the moon. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Unfortunately <Okay>. for me. <laughs> well, you know, again, I, people always say, is it good or is it bad, my horoscope? Well, it say, depends well, how you know. want, yeah. And that, with that kind of energy, it depends how you're, you're willing yeah. to um, allow it to be expressed. Yeah. Well, for me, nothing is good or bad. Okay? Yeah, Everything no, I agree. Mm. Right, okay. But check this out, because this is quite interesting. So 
when I when I so I want to see where does that square come in and and where that square comes in is is imagine that now Pluto comes into your 11th house and sits um, conjunct natal Neptune in the 11th house okay and and it's it's um, opposing because I mean it's activating the Neptune Mercury opposition. Yeah. So now the draconic Pluto square moon has come in and lined up with that natal Neptune Mercury opposition. Now when you put together the symbolism of Pluto conjunct Neptune in the eleventh house, well, automatically those two planets can symbolize the supernatural. Yeah, I was about to say para- very paranormal, good things. Yeah. esoteric, yeah. And, and, look, <laughs> and, and you know, and with group affiliations, like minded people. Okay, mm-hmm. and and Pluto also coming in there is empowering Mercury. So you're going to have deep thought. You're going to have a very good communication skills because also the moon is squaring into that the draconic moon squares into the natal neptune opposed mercury i hope i haven't lost you here and so when we bring that moon in with uh, square to natal Mercury. We've get, we've got good communication school skills. She's articulate. She wants to help people through communicating about spiritual subjects. <laughs> you know, I think that sums me up. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, it's really easy for me to say that in retrospect, knowing that about you. Yeah. But I have to, you know, and also the eighth house again. Now it's echoing all the eighth house symbolism that has to do with taboo subjects, the occult, mm-hmm. mysticism, alternative healing therapies. I mean, that's just one aspect of the eighth house. I could then take this approach and and look at it from a psychological standpoint and bring in issues of. Uh, you and other people's resources like you and a spouse's resources together it could have to do with uh, how you feel valued or not by other people eighth house you know second eighth has to do with how valuable am i how valuable am i to other people Mm -hmm. you know there's there's all ways i could go with it if i was in consultation with you i'm just trying to give a simple example which didn't come across too simple probably because it does get complicated trying to explain it without seeing a visual of the chart you know what i'm what i made a lot of sense um to me because you You know well i know my chart and you hit it right on the nail with the sun being the ruler of my eighth house so when you noted that uh emphasis on the eighth house the light bulb went off for me and in consultation I would have given you more detail there so yeah. um, so I think it was it was spot on from my point of view what what do you think in terms of predestination Lauren um, where do you stand with that when you're looking at the draconic chart in relation to maybe the natal chart as well how do you feel about a concept like that oh, good question um, well I, I do think that life does have um, a sense of predestiny to it, yes. But it's kind of like, okay, how about like this? You've come here, what's predestined is the themes and the areas that you've come here to explore. However, how you go about exploring those areas are up to you because we do have free will. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might need to explore uh, maybe um, relationships in this lifetime and partnerships, but you know how you're going to go about that. Whether you're going to get married on a piece of paper, whether you're going to have a business partnership, however you're going to go about it is up to you. So, um, you know, I look at it like um, a river is going to flow in the direction it needs to flow. So you can't stop that water. It, it, there's a predestiny to where it needs to go. You can try to divert it. Uh, you can try to put things in its way. You know, the, you know that's what I mean by free will. You can do what you want with the water, but you know, any way you go about it, that river is going to go out to the mouth of you know of yeah. where it yeah. needs to go. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. that's just the kind of weird thing about it. But yeah, that's how I look at it. I think that it's a combination of absolutely um, destiny and 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 absolutely free will. It's it's a combination of both. I, I don't think yeah. you can you can put, you know negate one. I think they work hand in hand. Because in the universe, all of these um, energies are all relative. You know, they're they're all um, valid in their own way. So they can all exist all at the same time, um, in a sense, can't they? You know? Yeah. Um, And also, I've got a great question for you, because my husband, he was one of those strange people who was born with his north node at 29 degrees um, Pisces. 
Right. <laughs> so basically, right, right. his his and using your your theory with draconic when you're trying to. Um, uh, do the draconic chart uh, his nodes don't really move anywhere because That's he's right. right next to the um, the Aries point what, That's how, right. do you, how do you explain people who have that going on in their charts okay so you know basically every 19 years people are going to be born with the north node very close to zero degrees of Aries. And so they're going to come in this lifetime with a draconic chart that's like their soul chart is almost identical to their to their their natal chart. So I would say various things. I would say maybe they need to um, learn or come in in this lifetime with sort of like one strong emphasis. Um, they need to uh, maybe, you know, Pamela Crane says what you see is what you get. That These people, you know, there's no, there's nothing underneath the mask. You know, they're showing you what they are. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? There's no other layer there. Um, yeah, I think he's very much like that as well. He, he yes. is. He, what you see with my husband is what you get. <laughs> he's very yeah. much like that. Um, right. Would you say that they have had, I mean, it's a very big question, but would you say people like that um, uh, are quite complete with their, like in terms of reincarnation, with their reincarnation cycle? Um, I don't Hmm. What do you? I don't. Think so I mean, no, I'm just okay. thinking of. You know, I'm just thinking of. And again, you know, in today's world now, you know, where we used reincarnation that word some years ago, now it's almost like we've got these parallel lives going on and all sorts yeah. of. You know, all these. So it's kind of like, is it a past life? Is it a concurrent life? You mm -hmm. know, there's all. No, these that's big, true. Yeah, they do describe it like that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what I was going to say is, you know, I know people who were born around 1950 where these, you know, the draconic was very close to zero degrees in areas. And I can think of just two examples in my head. One person who who just always is, is, is sort of undermining himself and, and doesn't believe in himself. And so he has a lot of, you know, personal issues with self um, – self-value and self-worth and so you know I, I can't think that he's you know that he's on a higher yeah that he's completed his you know. uh, exactly yeah, his uh, and then I've got another one who to me is 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 you know very brilliant and very tapped into uh, he, I call him a wizard I mean he's he's another astrologer and and you know but again I, I don't know so I don't have a real good answer for that because again I think it's part of the mystery of life and I think that life is supposed to be a mystery because if we came here uh, knowing everything what what's the point of being here you know what's the point of going through this game I, I look at it like yeah. a game <laughs> it's a game have fun yeah well I think and I think yeah. it's okay to say that and I think not not enough people will say that and uh and well, we are kind of out of time, Lauren. Yeah. Can you believe it? It's gone so quickly. <laughs> it does fly, doesn't it? It does fly. But um, I think that's a, a brilliant point to leave it on, which is we don't know everything. And that's the beauty of it all is that there's all of these different areas still to research. If people are studying astrology, they can go down this road like you've gone down and, and try and make their contribution and, and learn more. And I mean, I suppose now you, you use draconic charts with the natal charts when you're doing readings i mean i suppose it's just an, a natural progression for you to use both at the same time is it is it not as soon as i put put in the data birth data for a natal chart the next thing i click is the draconic button because i got to see what this yeah. person's about you know yeah, yeah. It's the other part of them because it's just half of the story mm -hmm. for me yeah you know yeah and that's the beauty of astrology is that it it, it presents itself in layers there's so many different ways to understand who we are and what we're here to do through astrology and all these different manifestations of it so um yeah can i make one just last point yeah, very the, quickly yep the thing i want to put out to people out there that are studying astrology and even astrologers is you know allow yourself to explore like you said different areas uh, you know and 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 um, yeah and 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 learn on your own and listen to your to your intuition and just you know sort of like feel it out and try different things nothing is set in stone <laughs> explore you know yeah. yeah uh well thank you so much and would you just quickly give us your website 
Yeah, sure. Thank you. It's uh, www.laurendelsac.com. That's L-A-U-R-E-N-D-E-L-S-A-C-K. And I want to thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a, it's been such a pleasure and it flew. You know, um, like I'm, you I'm very honored and I'm going to have you back because we're going to do the emotional triggers and health and all of that stuff as well. Great. Because I Great. love that as well. But you've been a brilliant guest and I'm going to close your mic now and okay. um, we will talk again shortly. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Right, guys, so another show done and dusted, as they say. Um, it's been a great pleasure, as always. Until next time, as I always say, keep your eyes on the stars.